Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about the R9M module and I've actually purchased a couple, com quite a lot of combos actually. They're just very well priced in my opinion. Now, some of you might say, okay, well, what are the benefits of transferring or changing into an R9M module? Now, the R9M module broadcasts is at 900 megahertz or 800 and something if you're in the EU. Now, most of our controllers will broadcast at 2.4 gigahertz. So it is a huge difference in the frequency range. Now, the lower the frequency, the better it travels. And a, a good example of that, if you heard a car from far away with a very good sound system, what you will hear is you will never hear the vocals, which is the high frequency noise, or some kind of the instruments. All you will hear is the bass because the bass is the lowest frequency and that travels pretty damn far. And it penetrates through walls pretty good. I mean, I'm sure some of you had your walls shake because of that low frequency. And it's not because of the subwoofer or whatever is, is, is just louder. It's not. It's just because of the lower the frequency is, the further it will travel. And it is a lot better at penetrating as well. And this is why we get so much longer range with the R9M modules and why I'm picking up so many combos so I can start transferring most of my loved models or drones into the the R9 system and um, I've been using it quite often I have never gotten a fail safe now I've pushed it maximum to three kilometers and the only thing that's holding me back currently is my battery life so I'm still working on the most efficient setup and if you have been watching my channel you'll know I'm constantly building long-range testing setups trying different things and my latest one being the Zod Orbit because of its uh, unbelievable efficiency as you can tell I do have the R9 with the PCB antennas installed. Now also if you're going to be purchasing you know the R9 I do highly recommend you always get some extra antennas because you don't want to be grounded because you ripped an antenna by accident had a little crash or something just yanked it. So it's highly recommended you pick up some antennas whatever your antenna might be. For example this full-blown R9 combo that I got uses MMCX for the antennas here and if we can take a look here there we go as you can tell and sometimes if you're trying to remove it you can just break it so take that into consideration be extra careful and i do trust me hi highly recommend you get at least one extra antenna usually i i've hit three kilometers with just one antenna usually i don't put both antennas on the receiver uh it'll work just fine and um yeah but now i'm putting two since i actually picked up a couple extras because i didn't want to be grounded now the 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 combo that i got was the one that came with this the r9 over there and this antenna this is actually one of the combos that i got and um, this antenna, in terms of distance currently, up to three kilometers, um, I, I still I still don't see the need to get any other antenna. It's, it's doing that good. But soon I'm going to be going further, like I mentioned. This is why I have the other antennas also, and there's some ones that are still on the way to see which one can basically go the furthest and um, not just you know the range check for this like a real hardcore 100 milliwatts or 500 milliwatt range test and see how far we can go with the specific antennas now as i know if you wanted the longest range point your antenna straight up uh, i've noticed that with the 2.4 gigahertz so i think it should also translate into the 900 megahertz but i could be also wrong here so and again the lower the frequency the further it'll travel and the better the penetration will be so take that into consideration and also so the price of this is just remarkable and which is um, something what made it so attractive to me. I mean, I've gotten the TBS Crossfire when it first came out, the micro one. And um, have you ever seen it on the channel? I haven't really started using it until I needed a PWM receiver, which it had some sort of converter for it. And I still do have it, but I don't use it. I, I just don't use it. It's way too expensive. The receivers are hella expensive. And uh, especially if you're in Europe, that, that thing's a pain to, to get with customs and shipping. It was just terrible, but I had to get it for the channel at the time, so I did. It cost me like 250 bucks. But with the R9 here, it's a whole different story. I mean, this is just a, a game changer here, in my opinion. And this is the reason why I'm actually changing everything out to the R9 um, receivers and the R9 system because it just works a lot better in my opinion. Now, I know some people are actually reporting fail saves on the R9 Slim Plus. However, I never had that and everything is default, but the only thing that I see myself doing differently was that I never put both antennas. I always I just started with one antenna on. And you, to be honest, I don't really think you need two antennas. Uh, it's kind of like running diversity in a way, but um, 
I've just been using it on one antenna. It's just recently that I actually set up the two antennas here. And um, yeah, I, I don't know what the fail safe because I've actually used quite a lot of models and I do have a lot of bundles that I've never had the fail safe issue, not once and anywhere. So only actually once I had low RSSI, but I was pointing the, uh, I was basically sitting on the floor and then pointing the antenna to the ground. But that happens to me even on the 2.4 gigahertz when I get myself into that position. I do find myself getting into that position every once in a while. Now. Would I recommend the R9M module? I'd recommend it hands down and I bet you a lot of other people would do the same thing because it's a phenomenal system and without it I wouldn't have been doing this long range stuff. I wouldn't have the confidence to fly or try to fly as far as I can. It just makes long range FPV affordable and it just gives you a more secure link and it has all the options. You have telemetry, you have everything. Now you might say latency. Well latency is um... I don't think it'll be faster. I will test latency, but it's just the SBUS protocol. I mean, it just depends on how fast your transmitter is, uh, what is it called? Is uh, decoding or in inputting the PPM input into this, so this could, or this works by serial, I don't know yet. But it either works by serial or PPM, but I think this also works by PPM. We'll see that also in a later video once we stick it on a fly sky and see how we can make it work. Anyways, overall, is the R9M for you? Well, that's up to you. Um, I'd highly, if you have the cash for it, I'd highly recommend you pick it up. And receivers are just starting to get cheaper and cheaper. But I want to see the, the little mini ones. I still, they're still on the way. I bought this combo that came with this, the antenna, and three slim uh, R9 receivers, which I'm just telling you, they're just so attractive. Like, these combos are absolutely insane. Every time I see one, I just want to grab it. I don't want to just buy one receiver. I want to buy everything. I have, like, I'm, I have four of these, I think, now. <laughs> I don't know why, but um, yeah, it's just um, it's just it's just really nice. I don't need four, but I just I just can't explain it. Um, I, I'm in love with the R9 system, and uh, I'm sure other people are as well. And if you are, and if you are not, please let us know down in the comment section. I'll have a link to a couple of the combos that I purchased down below. You can go check those out. Those greatly support the channel. And well, I'll see you in the next one, and I'll see you in the other combos. Peace out.